Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today's gospel is home for me. I grew up on the shores, the southern shores of Lake Erie. And my grandfather grew grapes. He had over 30 acres of conquered grapes. And he grew grapes for the Welch's Grape Juice Company. And he'd grow those big clusters of purple conquered grapes that were so sweet. And every October the harvest would come in. And I, my brothers, our whole family, uh, life centered in that vineyard. Because every October the harvest would come. And all of us, the whole family would descend upon the farm to help with the harvest. And us kids would spend many, many hours running up and down the rows of the vineyard playing tag and just having a great time. Uh, there is a band all the way from Erie, Pennsylvania up to Buffalo and then over east to the Finger Lakes. They grow grapes in that region. And there's grape farm after grape farm after grape farm. That was home for me. And so when we get a text like today where Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. I can identify with this text. Now, this text might be new to you. And so what Jesus does in this gospel is he explains each of the characters in today's gospel. He's, first of all, the heavenly father is the vine dresser. That's polite, pretty language for he's the farmer. He's the one who takes care of the vineyard. He's the one, the heavenly father is the one who sees to it that the vineyard is properly cared for so that vines and branches can grow and eventually you'll get grapes. But then there's other characters in today's parable. Jesus says, I am the vine. You know, Jesus is that center stalk. That center stalk, which is anchored in the ground so that all growth and nourishment can come up through the vine, through Jesus, and then it branches out into the branches, and that's where we fit in. Jesus tells us in this parable, Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, the church. And of course, we have to stay attached. And what's the purpose of all this? Well, the purpose of a vineyard is very simple. Grow grapes. That's the point. And so, as we look at today's gospel, there's a couple of lessons that we can gather from today's text. And the first text, Jesus says it three times in today's gospel. I am the vine... You are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The first point is that we, the branches, if we're to be fruitful, if we're to produce, we have to stay connected to Jesus Christ. Now, that is good advice. As God's church, our mission, first and foremost, is to stay connected to Jesus Christ. Because once you're connected, the, the branches are connected to the vine, then you can receive nourishment, you can be strengthened, and you can do what you've been called to do, grow and produce fruit. The, the good grapes of good works is what he's calling for in today's gospel. So you have to stay attached. I can remember as a kid, my grandfather had a little small vineyard over here on the side where he would do experiments. Uh, he was on a mission. He wanted to discover, now folks, this was 50, 60, 70 years ago. 
He wanted to discover how can you get the purple out of those big juicy purple conquered grapes. How can you make them white? And so he would experiment and he would graft in different stocks, uh, different kinds of grapes because he wanted to see if he could produce a white conquered grape juice. Well, the best he ever got was pink. Never could do it. Now, today they can. Today they do have white conquered grape juice uh, through genetics, through grafting. But my point is, if you're ever going to produce any good as church, the branches have to stay connected to the vine. If you're not connected, you can't produce. Jesus says it perfectly. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So, point number one. Stay connected to Jesus Christ. When you have a crisis in life, when your faith is weak and wobbly, when you don't know where to turn and when you're helpless and, de and desperate, stay connected to Jesus Christ. Now, how do you do that? Through word, through sacrament, through worship, through being together for prayer and Bible study. Stay connected. That's the only way that we can strengthen ourselves so that we can produce the good works, the good grapes that God has called us to produce. So stay connected. Number two, the second thing that happens in the vineyard is God goes through, well, Jesus, well, it's God in, in this case. God, the Heavenly Father, goes through the vineyard and he prunes the vineyard. Now, that word in the Greek text, prune, is a very unusual word. Uh, you know, when, when you think of pruning, what do you think? Well, you think someone with some shears goes in there and then prunes out the dead wood, right? That's not what this is at all. It's not what it is at all. I suppose dead wood needs to be pruned out, but that's not the point. In Greek, this word means cleansed. He goes through and he cleanses the vines. He prunes. Now, what does that mean? In a vineyard, you go through and you prune and you cut and you cleanse. Well, did you know that with grapes, grapes will only grow on new growth? Grapes won't grow on old vines. Oh, what'll happen is the grapes will grow on an old vine and then they just kind of shrink and year after year, the grape becomes smaller and more bitter. No, that's not the kind of grape you want. You prune back the branches so that there'll be new growth and then those big clusters of grapes grow on the new growth. The same thing's true of raspberries and strawberries for you farmers out there. You have to cut back. You have to prune the, the grape branches so that they're able to produce new growth. Now, that may be a rather painful process in the life of the church. You know, the Holy Spirit works over the church. And the Holy Spirit goes through and works at our soul and, and prunes out the sin, and cuts the sin out. And, and through the sacrament of baptism, we are cleansed and washed. And through Holy Communion, we are nourished. You know, sometimes the pruning process can be painful, but it's worth it because it produces new growth. Maybe the best way to compare this is jump analogies is if you have a cancerous tumor in your body, what's the best thing that could happen to you? You cut it out. You prune it. You get rid of it. Then you cut it out either through surgery or radiation or chemo, however you do it. But you got to get rid of that cancer in order for new life to begin. And the same thing is true of the grapevine. It has to be pruned. It has to be cleansed because good works, the grapes grow from the new growth, not the old growth. From that which has been pruned, that's how you get grapes. And then there's a third thing that we must always be cognizant. 
You know, I do no good to stand in front of you and say to you, you need to be good branches. Or you need to grow good grapes. I do you no favor when I say that. What I have to do is, yes, I want you to be good branches. And I want you to go, grow good grapes. But what I have to tell you is that this is a gift of God's grace. You have to be nourished first. You have to be tended to first. And that's exactly what goes on in the life of the church. When Jesus says, I'm the vine and you are the branches, apart from me you can do nothing. He is referring to something that's going to happen to him in the future. Jesus himself is going to be pruned and cleansed on the cross of Calvary. Jesus there is going to die for us on that stalk that is called the cross. And Jesus is going to sacrifice life up there so that you and I can be forgiven, so that you and I can live. This is the story of grace. We don't pull ourselves up to God. No, God comes down to us in Jesus. He's the vine. We're the branches. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. We are together because of God's grace. God planted everything in the vineyard. God gives what is necessary so there's growth. God helps us. And this is true of the life of the church. As church together, what do we do? Every Sunday we gather to hear God's word. Every Sunday through sacrament, through, through the waters, uh, we are renewed in faith. Every Sunday at the altar, we receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins so that we can be strengthened and grow. Why all of this effort and work? So that God can produce grapes, the good works that are so necessary. But you know, in this whole process, and I think this is critically important, when you take grapes, what happens to the grape eventually? You know, it bears, you, uh, I can remember us kids out there, you, you get a crate of grapes and you would take them over to the trailer and put them on the trailer, you were so proud, here's another crate of grapes. What's going to happen to those grapes? They get consumed. One way or another. My grandfather, uh, he grew grapes for Welch's grape juice. That meant the grapes were going to be crushed. And the juice would be squeezed out of those grapes. The mash that was left behind, that was converted into cattle food. The grapes, the juice, that was converted into Welch's grape juice. And it doesn't matter, you know, uh, maybe that grape is going to become a great wine, but it has to be crushed first. Maybe that grape is going to be a food, like table grapes that you eat at the table. It's going to be consumed. Or maybe they're going to be baked and become raisins. They're going to be consumed. All grapes to meet their fulfillment, their purpose, have to be consumed. Isn't that what happened to Jesus? He gave the fullness of his life to us. And what happened? In his good work of living life for God and for us, he was killed and consumed and crushed upon the cross of Calvary so that you and I could live. And the same thing is going to be true of you. As church, we are called to serve. We are called to ministry. We are the grapes. We are the good works of God. And we go out into the world to serve. And in that process, we will be consumed. Our energy will be depleted. Our time and effort will be prevailed upon. We will reach out to other people, hopefully, in the name of Jesus Christ to share the gospel. But in the process, we are consumed. And we lose our energy, our time, our money, everything. 
we become a sacrifice. Just like Jesus on the cross. We become a sacrifice and we're sacrificed for the common good. That's how it works in the life of the church. And so it's absolutely important for you and me to remember that when it comes to growing grapes and producing good works in your life and mine, this is a gift from God and we need to stay connected to God. Then we are grafted into the family of God through baptism. And then we are called to serve. And in the process, we will give up life. We will make a sacrifice so that others can hear the gospel. I'm, one more point. I'm reminded of a hymn. It's an old hymn, but it really sums up everything very precisely. Jesus is uh, speaking in this hymn, and the verse goes like this. It's in Old English. Jesus says, I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that you might ransomed be and quickened from the dead. I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? Says Jesus. It's a question to ponder. Amen.